this video, I'll demonstrate the problem here. It gives us a frequency table. It's a grouped frequency table or a binned frequency table where the class limits do not overlap. And we can identify the following parts of a frequency distribution table as we learn how to answer this question at the same time, which says, to identify what the number 34 is. So we'll identify what 34 is and also define all these different vocab words. All right, so I have already typed in the data. Now you can copy and paste it, but I like having my class limits on the lower end separate from my upper class limits. So this is my, my lower class limits. My upper class limits. And my frequencies, the number of students. Right. All right, so let's try to make this look a little nicer. You can select, right click, format, choose in the format window alignment, wrap text, and then I usually center everything horizontally and vertically. And that just makes it so that things fit better into a more narrow space. Also, I'm going to use just the letter F to represent my frequencies. All right, so now we know we have lower class limits, we have upper class limits, we have frequencies, all right? So the frequencies count how many data values, either were 15, 16, 17, or 18. So the class limits are the lowest value and the highest value for data values that could belong to that bin. All right, now we have uh, class width is defined on here. Let's just calculate the class width somewhere well, over here. Class width. And maybe I should have done this whole row with that wrap alignment. Okay, so my class width is the distance between any two lower class limits, consecutive lower class limits, or any two upper class limits, or any two midpoints, or any two class boundaries. Um, so we'll use the class limit since we have that already. So I'll put an equal sign and I'm just going to subtract any two consecutive class limits, either both lower class limits or both upper class limit. What you don't want to do is try to subtract within the same class. That will get you the wrong answer. 18 min minus 15 would have given us the answer 3 instead of the correct answer 4. So that would be the class width. All right, now that I have the class width, let's keep looking down at some of the other options here. Class boundary. What are the class boundaries? We know what the class limits are but the boundaries are in between the class limits. This is how we um, prevent having gaps in our histogram when we turn this into an image called a histogram. And so what we can do is calculate the class boundaries. And the class boundaries will be, as I said, in between the class limits. So in between this value and this value, there will be a class boundary. And that will be the midpoint of the two values. What is a midpoint? A midpoint is simply the average or the mean of two extremes. So I can calculate using either the average formula, or I can just add the two values and make sure they're in a quantity of parentheses, and then divide by two. 
Now I can copy it down like that, but when I get into a problem, when I want the last class boundary, there's always one more class boundary at the end. And the formula doesn't copy well. So another trick is to use the class width. Once you have one class boundary calculated, you can just keep adding the class width to it. So now I'll be adding the class width of 4, and I'm going to go ahead and make that an absolute reference by putting dollar signs in between, um, in front of the column reference and the row reference, or you can just press the F4 button on your keyboard. So now when I copy this down, we don't have any issues. And um, this one would actually be one um, class width less. OK, so now we have all the class boundaries. That would be the edges of our histogram bars when we make a histogram. And let's look at what else we have. We have class midpoint. OK, so a class midpoint. So we've seen the midpoint um, in between two classes. But what about a point in the middle of a single class? So the class midpoint would be the average of the two class limits. So again, I can just add them as a quantity and divide by 2. Or you could also use the average formula on those two values and then copy it down. You could also see something. Oh, it doesn't like that I was not using the formulas in the adjacent cells, but that's OK. We can ignore that, and we can ignore it for all of them. OK, that's OK. Um, now, another way you can get this is you can calculate one average or one midpoint, and then you can calculate the rest of them by adding the class width again, and so on. All right, so those are all our class midpoints. So I think we've we've done all of these: the class width, the class boundary, lower class limit, upper class limit, class midpoint. All right, so now we were asked to identify what 34 is, and 34 is down here. It's an upper class limit. Okay, so that may have seemed like a lot of work just to answer this question. But it wasn't just to answer this question. It was so that we would be familiar with all the parts. And this will prepare us for working on other problems.